Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. London Tower to Fire Flash 3, you're clear to go. That's certainly some aircraft. Yes, sir. Uh, London Tower, this is Fire Flash. Height to 15,000 feet, uh, climbing to 150,000 feet. Permission to leave London Control Area. You are clear to leave Control Area. Report your position as you cross the coast. Thank you, London. Will do. Out. There she goes, through the sound barrier. International Air Minister, Chief Controller, London Airport here. Fire Flash 3 has taken off with no mishaps and crossed the coast a few minutes ago. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, this is Fire Flash 3, position TS-757, stroke AR-436. Losing height rapidly, engines... Fire Flash 3, this is London Control. Can you hear me? Rescue station. Mayday from Fire Flash 3. Last heard of position TS-757 stroke AR-436. Start search operation immediately. Rescue headquarters. Please divert all ships nearest to TS-757 stroke AR-436 to search the area. Search aircraft launch, sir. Good. Approaching rescue area. Commence Operation Seahawk. London Tower. Operation Seahawk. Search negative. Roger, Seahawk. Return to base. Both aircraft and ship report search negative, sir. Fire Flash 3 has just disappeared. It's fantastic. All right. Cancel Operation Seahawk.
It just is not good enough. That aircraft cost not only five million pounds, but 600 lives as well. As international air minister, I have a duty to the public, and I am ordering all far flashes to be grounded immediately. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Perfectly. Furthermore, I want the whole project tested, both in the lab and on the aircraft herself. But with all due respect, sir, we already have carried out exhaustive tests on Fireflash. Then you will redo them and recheck the whole works. Is that understood? Yes, sir. No blame is being attached to anyone. But there is a fault, and that fault has to be eliminated. All fire flashes are to be grounded, and they are certified as airworthy. <laughs> This morning, British plane Fireflash disappeared on its flight to San Francisco. Earlier this year, on its maiden flight, the Fireflash had a bomb fixed to a undercarriage, and it was only due to the intervention of international rescue that the plane and its passengers were saved. This time, there were no survivors. All Fireflashes have been grounded pending tests. Sabotage again? I doubt it. With the precautions they take now, sabotage is unlikely. But why should an aircraft like that suddenly disappear? Metal fatigue? I guess it could be 101 things. We'd better watch these test flights pretty closely. Despite everything, I still think it's a great aircraft. International Rescue Space Station? This is Jeff Tracy. Go ahead, Father. I want you to monitor all transmissions on the fire flash tests. Right, Father. By the way, I've been checking on the crash. According to our automatic fixer, the fire flash crew radioed a wrong position before they disappeared. They were more than 50 miles out. That's strange. Anyway, Alan, keep listening. FAB. Scott, Virgil, Gordon. Yes, Father, we're all here. I want you boys all to stand by. Further tests are being carried out on Fireflash. It could mean trouble. Patterson, how's it going? Well, uh, we've eliminated metal fatigue and now we're waiting the results of the radiation test. Ah, that could be it now. Well, all tests show the fire flash to be completely okay, so it's over to you now. We'll fly the same course as Fire Flash 3. The plane has been checked by the ground crew and found in perfect order. Keep in constant touch with control. What height do we fly? 150,000 feet. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Good. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you keep in constant touch with control. Good luck. Fireflash to control. Over. Loud and clear, Fireflash. Control. I'm about to start final ground tests. Roger. It will be your job to maintain continuous contact with Fireflash until she arrives at San Francisco. Sir. Fireflash to tower. A pre-flight test completed. Take off clearance. Fireflash, you're clear to go. Full power. Flash to tower, airborne at 2,500 feet. Climbing to 150,000 feet. About to go through a sound barrier. Fire flash to London Tower. 
Uh, crossing the coast at LS749 stroke AP428. That's odd. The automatic fixer puts them 20 miles northwest of there. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Everything seems fine. We're about 50 miles from the crash area. Thank you, Fireflash. Take a position check when you reach the area. Will do, London. Switching to automatic flight plan. So far, so good. Better prepare to check our position. Elevator power unit negative. London Control, this is Fireflash. We're having trouble with our EPU. Gyro stabilizer change port. Fireflash is in trouble, sir, but I can't read their messages. A Fireflash to London. Also having trouble with our gyro. Fireflash, please repeat. With gyro stabilizer trouble. Our position is TS-749, stroke AP-428. Just as we feared. It's the same trouble in the same position. Emergency stations. The instruments have gone haywire and the controls are not reacting. Go ahead, Alan. Fireflash, Father. They've sent out a mayday, but the signal was too weak for London to receive. I can only just hear it myself. They've given their position, but I make them 180 miles northwest of it. Okay, Alan. Listen out and see if you can get another fix. FAB. Good shooting. This is it, boys. Fireflash is in difficulties. Come up and I'll fill you in on the details. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, Scott, you take Thunderbird 1 and establish a base on the coastline nearest the crash area. Then scan the area electronically. Yes, Father. Virgil, you take Gordon and Brains with you, and I guess you'll need Thunderbird 4. Right, Father. Keep in touch, Scott. Will do.
preservers. Will you take a look at that? Uh, this is International Rescue. Can uh, you give me a hand with my equipment? Uh, we can put it in the barn over there. International Rescue? Well, sure. But it's the cows that are in it. Then they'll just have to move over. Approaching danger zone. Uh, uh, Virgil, uh, get London Control to send the circuit diagrams of Fire Flash's electronics. I may need them. By radio photograph? Uh, yeah. Okay, brains. Quiet, Catley. Yeah, uh, the trouble uh, could be here somewhere. Ah, I, I, I think I've got it. No, I, I, I haven't got it. Nothing. There's not a thing floating in the whole area. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got it. Now, if the gyro uh, shaft sheared. It could have damaged the main hydraulic power supply to the flaps. Yeah, that would cause the aircraft to crash. Uh, do you think it's possible that they crash landed on the sea? Well, it's possible. It would depend on the, uh, the skill of the crew. Well, if they had the best crew available. If they crash landed on the sea, we would have received a distress call from their lifeboat. Unless... Unless they were trapped in the cabin. And if the hydraulic system jammed, the automatic escape hatches would not operate. Do you realize what this could mean? I, I, I realize, all right, that they could be alive, trapped in the flight deck at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> London Control. This is Fireflash. Can you hear me? It's no good. They can't hear us. Not even with a new thorium beam transmitter. We've had it. Thunderbird 2 from Mobile Control. Have searched complete area. Result? Negative. Can see you approaching danger zone. FAB. Launching Thunderbird 4. We think crew may be trapped in aircraft on seabed. Thunderbird 2 from Thunderbird 4, commencing launch. Mobile control from Thunderbird 4, I need a course to take me to Fire Flash crash position. Thunderbird 4 from mobile control, steer 107 degrees, magnetic. Steering 107 magnetic, Scott. Okay, Gordon, you're approaching crash area. Commence search. Thunderbird 4, FAB. you can. Hey, say, that, that looked like a light. Keep flashing. It fused.
I found her, and she's in one piece. Can't see any signs of life yet. Oh, nice work, Gordon. Stand by uh, one moment. Now, uh, yeah, now l l let me see. Uh, now it's uh, the engines could... Could they still be alive, Brains? Now, please, please, Virgil. Uh, Gordon, uh, cut off the engines on the tailplane with a laser beam, and Fireflash will float to the surface. Then we can rescue the, the, the crew. If they're still alive. <laughs> There's a frogman. They found us. Virgil, uh, this is Gordon. They're alive. I can see them. I'm going to send them a message on the light type. It works. Gordon, she surfaced. FAB, coming on alongside her. Mm -hmm. 
What's that? What's that smell? What smell? Are you crazy? We can hardly breathe now. We've got to do something. We're gonna be burned to death. the rescue capsule arrives, climb aboard. Come on! Thunderbird 2 from Thunderbird 4, the co-pilot's aboard the capsule. The pilot should be aboard in a couple of seconds. Thunderbird 2, FAB. Are you aboard the rescue capsule? Sing out if you are. I can hear you over the radio. Okay. All aboard. Right. Hold tight. Thunderbird 2 to mobile control and Thunderbird 4. Am clearing area. Looks like she's going up any second. are safe. Once again, International Rescue saved the day. We understand from the International Air Ministry that a report radioed to London by the International Rescue eggheads may provide an answer to the technical fault which has bugged the Fire Flash aircraft in these past few weeks. Boys, I'd like to add my thanks. Well done, all of you. Say, where's Scott? He flew in a few minutes ago. His takeoff from England was delayed for some reason. Hey, sorry I'm late, folks. I had to milk the cows before I took off. All right, go ahead, Alan. I've been listening to the bulletins from London, Father. And according to the latest news flash, there's a top-level meeting about the fire flash going on right now. EPU failure can originate only in the wing. The hydraulic faults point to a lack of sufficient space for the master in the original design. Super tension due to torsion simply wouldn't happen uh, that gentlemen. way. Gentlemen. Can I have your attention, please? Thank you. It now seems quite certain that the fault in the fire flash has been traced to the hydraulic system. But what causes the fault is something that remains to be discovered. So far, we have developed three different theories, all of which place the trouble in the starboard wing. I propose that for the present, we pursue these three theories. I can't see what else we can do. I can't see what else we can do. The cause of the fire flash disasters can only be found whilst the aircraft is actually in flight. Gee, if only they'd let us fly one of them, with Thunderbird 2 alongside to help if need be. Well, how about that, Father? Right, it's settled. We must contact London straight away. 
Tintin? Yes, Mr. Tracy? Take a letter, Tintin. I think it's time for International Rescue to act. <laughs> It's from International Rescue. They want to come and test Fire Flash over the same route. Well, if anyone can establish the fault they can, I suppose they must be the most experienced pilots in the business. All the same, we'd better arrange for Captain Hansen to make the flight with them. He knows them from the Fire Flash's maiden flight. You know, when they saved his life. Get him over here, will you? Very good, sir. Then contact security. This whole operation is to be top secret. No one is to fly within 100 miles of the test flight path. And at the airport, there is to be 600 yards clearance for the International Rescue craft. Right you are, sir. Um, where was the letter posted, sir? Maybe it'll let us know where International Rescue are based. <laughs> posted at London Airport. They never miss a trick, do they, sir? I've been in touch with the airport, Father. Preparations for Virgil's arrival seem to be well underway. Thank you, Alan. Virgil is going to reach London at noon. What form will the rescue operation take? Well, it's difficult to say at present, Alan. But Virgil is loaded up with Pod 4, the diving escape bell, and the laser beam cutter. Anyway, keep in touch with London Control in case they want any help with procedure. Will do, Father. Thunderbird 2 should be crossing the British coast any moment now. Crossing the coast now? Right. Best prepare for a touchdown now, fellas. International rescue crossing the coast now, sir. Right. Get the fire flash lined up at the end of runway 27. Yes, sir. Fire flash from control tower, fire flash from control tower. Taxi out to end of runway 27 and await further instructions. Yes, sir. Fire flash in position, sir, on runway 27. Good. Instruct all personnel, with the exception of Captain Hansen, to vacate the aircraft. Very good, sir. We're at International Rescue now. ETA now six minutes, sir. Good. Seal the airport. Yes, sir. Ah! is fully operational, sir. Right. What time is it? Three minutes to twelve, sir. And no sign of them. Oh, don't worry. They'll get here on time. On an airport from International Rescue. International Rescue craft approaching on flight path 29, sir. <laughs> Calling London Airport from International Rescue. Come in, International Rescue, loud and clear. We're approaching you along flight path 29. Request permission to land. International Rescue from London Airport. You are clear to land. Do you require runway? Uh, no, London. Will not require runway. Roger, International Rescue. London Airport has been sealed. Fire flash standing by at the end of runway 27. Thank you, London. Okay, Virgil. Everything's been laid out for us. Losing height now. Twelve o'clock, sir. Here she comes. Boy, what timing. You know you've got to hand it to those fellas. Thunderbird 2 has touched down at London, Father. Right. Now hear this, Alan. I want you to organize and maintain constant contact between yourself, Thunderbird 2, and the Fire Flash. Is that clear? Yes, Father. Nothing's got to go wrong this time. Nothing. Okay, Father. Scott and Fire Flash with Captain Hansen now. Can you hear us on this frequency, Alan? Virgil? Hearing you strength five, Scott. Me too, Scott. 
Father's instructed me to maintain complete contact throughout the test flight. Okay, Ellen. We're switching to open contact. Right. Got it. Thank you, Fireflash, and good luck. London Control from International Rescue. We are ready to start testing Fireflash. All right, International Rescue. You're clear to take off. All right, Scott. Control has given us clearance. Oh, thanks, Ellen. Well, Captain, it's well of you to help us out like this. Listen, Tracy. If anyone should be grateful, it's me. When Fireflash was in trouble on its maiden flight, you saved my life. It's a real privilege to be able to pay you guys back this way. So long, Scott. sound barrier. Stand by to level up. Scott has made a good takeoff, Father, in the fire flash. Right, Alan. Glad to hear they're making out okay with the unfamiliar controls. How about Virgil? He's just been given clearance by London Control. I'm at 150,000 feet, on course. Well, how are you doing, Virgil? Okay, Scott. I'm soon gonna catch you up, don't worry. And Alan, I want a position check. Okay, Scott. Give me your present fix. We are at LS749 stroke AP428. No, Scott, you, your reading is wrong. You are 20 miles northwest of that point. 20 miles? Gee, there's some miscalculation. Yeah, those controls are sure way out beat. All right, Alan, thanks. You better tell Virgil. Yeah, we'll do. We ought to be getting the first reports from Fireflash soon. Ah. That must be them now. Go ahead, Fireflash. We found a fault in the automatic locator, London. Fireflash was giving a wrong position. Faulty locator? Well, that could explain a lot. Furthermore, we're having trouble with a trim. It looks as if the elevator power unit... Fireflash. Come in, Fireflash. They've gone dead, sir. It's the same pattern. The same pattern. First the EPU, then the radio goes. London from Fireflash. London from Fireflash. Come in, London. It's no use. The radio's dead. We've lost contact with them. Oh, no, we haven't. Not all together. Alan, Virgil, do you read me? Sure do, Scott. Loud and clear. The Fireflash radio circuit is non-functional. Now, we're going to have to relay messages to London via Alan in the space station. We gather it's pretty desperate. Is that right? Yeah. The EPU is negative. How about the standby? Well, that's gone, too. It looks as if Fireflash is taking one colossal crash dive into the Atlantic Ocean. I just can't get the nose up. Scott, I've been through to London and explained about the EPU and radio failures. They say you should bail out and let them pick you up. Bail out? If we do that, we'll never know what the thought in Fireflash was. And so we'll be back to square one. Okay, Scott. It looks like we're gonna have to try that little scheme we discussed earlier. How long have we got till the Fireflash hits the water? Well, judging by the present rate of descent, I'd say we've got about 15 minutes. Did you get that? We've got 15 minutes. Right. Be seeing you. 
I hope. Okay, Scott. Hold the fire flash dead steady. We'll adjust it from this end. It's going to be tricky, but we can do it safely, provided we don't get too much turbulence. All right, Rachel. Is Gordon ready? All set, Gordon? Yep. Ready to go. All right. Open the hatch. Hey, that's funny. I thought I saw someone. What'd you say, Gordon? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm just seeing things, that's all. Right. Stand by to enter wing. Father, Gordon has been winched into the starboard wing of the fire flash and is checking the place out. How long is that going to take, Alan? That depends on what he finds when he gets in there. Where should I start then? The EPU should be situated somewhere near the pyrometer cylinders. Yeah, I think I can see them. I'm gonna try and get a little closer. Well, what's the height now? 40,000 feet. We've got less than four minutes. They've been cut. Hey, what the blazes was that? It sounded like a shot. It couldn't be. All right, International Rescue. I'm ready for you. Come on out. Look, I don't know what your game is, but there's some pretty vital pieces of equipment around here that we don't want to smash if we can help it. Who are you kidding? This aircraft is finished, and you know it. In just a couple of minutes more, it's going to make a mighty big splash in the ocean and then disappear like all the others. One and a half minutes. Hey, what the heck is going on in the way? I shouldn't jump if I were you. Your parachute would never open in time. Oh, uh, yeah. Gordon, what's going on? Answer, please. Come in, Gordon. Look, Scott, there's no time to explain. We've had an uninvited guest lossing up the works in here. But I guess he won't give any more trouble. Gordon, we've got 30 seconds left before we hit the water. That's too late to bail out. Can you fix the EPU? No, Scott. I couldn't remake the join in time. It would take too long. Ten seconds, Tracy.
the International Rescue Organization, the fire flash run from London to San Francisco is to be resumed next week. Police authorities in London have completed their investigations into the sabotaging of the aircraft and state that the efforts of international rescue have led to the unmasking of the international gang bent on aircraft espionage. Particular stress was laid on the... Oh, for Pete's sake. Just at the most interesting part. Oh, dear, I am sorry. Tintin and I were just putting the apple pies in the oven and the darn fuse blew. Oh, I'm sure Gordon will soon fix that, Grandma. Yeah, you remember what you said after the Fire Flash episode, Gordon? Just like fixing a fuse, you said. Here I go again. <laughs>